Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today, I have a story of magic and mischief for you from Japan. This is... Well, I really... I don't want to give too much away, but it is a lovely little story. This is... The Tea Kettle. Long ago, as I've heard tell, there dwelt at the temple of Marinji in the province of Kutsuke, a holy priest. Now, there were three things about this reverend man. First, he was wrapped up in meditations and observances and forms and doctrines. He was a great one for the sacred sutras, and knew strange and mystical things. Then, he had a fine, exquisite taste of his own, and nothing pleased him so much as the ancient tea ceremony of the Chano Yu. And, for the third thing about him, he knew both sides of a copper coin well enough, and loved a bargain. None so pleased as he, when he happened upon an ancient tea kettle lying rusty and dirty and half-forgotten in a corner of a poor shop in a back street of his town. An ugly old bit of old metal, said the holy man to the shopkeeper. But it will do well enough to boil my humble drop of water an evening. I'll give you three rin for it. This he did, and took the kettle home, rejoicing, for it was of bronze. Fine work, the very thing for the cha nu yo. The novice cleaned and scoured the tea kettle, and it came out as pretty as you please. The priest turned it this way and that, and upside down looked into it, tapped it with his fingernail. He smiled. A bargain, he cried, a bargain, and rubbed his hands. He set the kettle upon a box covered with a purple cloth, and looked at it so long that, first, he was fain to rub his eyes many times, and then to close them altogether. His head dropped forward, and he slept. And then, believe me, the wonderful thing happened. The tea kettle moved, though no hand was near it. A hairy head. Two bright eyes looked out of the spout. The lid jumped up and down. Four brown and hairy paws appeared, and a fine bushy tail. In a minute, the kettle was down from the box and going round and round looking at things. A very comfortable room, to be sure, says the tea kettle. Pleased enough to find itself so well lodged, it soon began to dance and caper nimbly and to sing at the top of its voice. Three or four novices were studying in the next room. The old man is lively they said. Only hark to him. Where can he be at? And they laughed in their sleeves. Heaven's mercy the noise that the tea kettle made. Bang, bang, thud, thud, thud. The novices soon stopped laughing. One of them slid aside the karakami and peeped through. Ah, the devil and all's in it, he cried. Here's the master's old tea kettle turned into a sort of a badger. Oh, the gods protect us from witchcraft, for certain we are lost and I scoured it not an hour since, said another novice, and he fell to reciting the holy sutras on his knees. A third laughed. I'm for a nearer view of the hobgoblin, he said. So the lot of them left their books in a twinkling and gave chase to the tea kettle to catch it. But could they come up with the tea kettle? Not a bit of it. It danced and it leapt and it flew into the air. The novices rushed here and there, slipping upon the mats. They grew hot, they grew breathless. Ha ha ha! laughed the tea kettle, and, catch me if you can, laughed the wonderful tea kettle. Presently the priest awoke, all rosy the holy man. And what's the meaning of this racket, he says, disturbing me at my holy meditations and all? Master, master, cried the novices, panting and mopping their brows. Your, your tea kettle is bewitched. It was a badger, no less, and the dance it has been giving us you'd never believe. Stuff and nonsense, says the priest. Bewitched? Not a bit of it. There it rests on its box, good quiet thing, just where I put it. And sure enough, so it did, looking as hard and cold and innocent as you please. There was not a hair of badger near it. It was the novices that looked foolish. A likely story indeed, said the priest. I have heard of the pestle that took wings to itself and flew away, parting company with the mortar. That is easily to be understood by any man, but a kettle that turned into a badger? No, no, to your books, my sons, and pray to be preserved from the perils of illusion. 
That very night the holy man filled the kettle with water from the spring and set it on the hibachi to boil for his cup of tea. When the water began to boil, Ay! Ay! the kettle cried. Ay! Ay! The heat of the, heat of the great hell! And it lost no time at all, but hopped off the fire as quick as you please. Sorcery! cried the priest. Black magic! A devil! A devil! A devil! Mercy on me! Help! 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 He was frightened out of his wits, the dear good man. All the novices came running to see what was the matter. The, the tea kettle is bewitched, he gasped. It was a badger, assuredly it was a badger. It both speaks and leaps about the room. Nay, master, said a novice. See where it rests upon its box. Quiet, good thing. And sure enough, so it did. Most reverend sir, said the novice, let us all pray to be preserved from the perils of illusion. The priest sold the tea kettle to a tinker and got for it twenty copper coins. It's a mighty bit of bronze, says the priest. Mind, I'm giving it away to you. I'm sure I cannot tell what for. Ah, he was the one for a bargain. The tinker was a happy man and carried home the kettle. He turned it this way and that and upside down and looked into it. Pretty piece, says the tinker. A very good bargain. And when he went to bed that night, he put the kettle by him to see it first thing in the morning. He awoke at midnight and fell to looking at the kettle by the bright light of the moon. Presently it moved, though there was no hand near it. Strange, said the tinker, but he was a man who took things as they came. A hairy head with two bright eyes looked out of the kettle's spout. The lid jumped up and down. Four brown and hairy paws appeared and a fine bushy tail. It came quite close to the tinker and laid a paw upon him. Well, says the tinker. I'm not wicked, says the tea kettle. No, says the tinker. But I like to be well treated. I'm a badger tea kettle. Well, so it seems, says the tinker. At the temple they called me names, beat me and set me on the fire. I can't stand it, you know. I like your spirit, says the tinker. I think I shall settle down with you. Shall I keep you in a lacquer box, says the tinker. Not a bit of it. Keep me with you. Let us have a talk now and again. I'm very fond of a pipe. I like rice to eat and beans and sweet things. A cup of sake sometimes, says the tinker. Well, yes, now you mention it. I'm willing, says the tinker. Thank you kindly, says the tea kettle. And, as a beginning, would you object to my sharing your bed? The night has turned a little chilly. Not the least in the world, says the tinker. The tinker and the tea kettle became the best of friends. They ate and talked together. The kettle knew a thing or two and was very good company. One day... Are you poor? says the kettle. Yes, says the tinker. Middling poor. Well, I have a happy thought. For a tea kettle I am out of the way. Really, very accomplished. I believe you, says the tinker. My name is Bambuku Chagama. I am the very prince of badger tea kettles. Your servant, my lord, says the tinker. If you'll take my advice, says the tea kettle, you'll carry me around as a show. I really am out of the way, and it's my opinion you'd make a mint of money. That would be hard work for you, my dear Bambuku, says the tinker. Not at all. Let us start forthwith, says the tea kettle. So they did. The tinker bought hangings for a theater, and he called the show Bambuku Chagama. How the people flocked to see the fun. For the wonderful and most accomplished tea kettle danced and sang and walked the tightrope as to the manner born. It played such tricks and had such droll ways that the people laughed till their sides ached. It was a treat to see the tea kettle bow as gracefully as a lord and thank the people for their patience. The Bambuku Chagama was the talk of the countryside, and all the gentry came to see it as well as the commonality. As for the tinker, he waved a fan and took the money. You may believe that he grew fat and rich. He even went to court, where the great ladies and royal princesses made much of the wonderful tea kettle. At last, the tinker retired from business, and to him the tea kettle came with tears in its bright eyes. I'm afraid it's time to leave you, it says. Now don't say that, Mbuku dear, says the tinker. We'll be so happy together now we are rich. I've come to the end of my time, says the tea kettle. 
you will not see old Bambuku any more. Henceforth, I shall be an ordinary kettle, nothing more or less. Oh, my dear Bambuku, what shall I do? cried the poor tinker in tears. I think I should like to be given to the temple of Moringi as a very sacred treasure, says the tea kettle. It never spoke or moved again. So the tinker presented it as a very sacred treasure to the temple and the half of his wealth with it. And the tea kettle was held in wondrous fame for many a long year. Some persons even worshipped it as a saint. And that is the Japanese folktale of the tea kettle. A story of mischief and friendship. And really, how to be nice, regardless of how unusual the thing may seem. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.